mention that when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him. It is a sad phenomenon that contention started to appear in our families and our churches. Contention in our chassan. Same happened with St. Peter. People contended with him with no reason because he baptized a man who was not circumcised without even knowing this man. The Pharisee contended with the blind man for no reason. They judged Christ because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. We know this man is not from God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. A lot of time, the contention comes from being fast to judge without any information. Like what happened with St. Peter, even the disciples said to Christ today, who sent this blind man or his father? How did you know? You don't know him. How did you judge that he sent or his parents sent? The Pharisee and the tax collector, the Pharisee was praying and saying, thank you God that I'm not like this. The tax collectors, the adulterers, how did you know that this tax collector is a sinner? He represents us when we are fast to judge without any information. Nowadays, we can find people who meet one another but they don't greet one another. Or they, if we uh, if, if the deacon in the church say kiss one another, they try to sit away from one another to avoid this. People try to avoid where this person is because I'm not okay with him. I don't like to say hello. When a woman goes and say, what's wrong? Can we sit together? No. I don't want to see her. I don't want even to say hello. And contention started to appear in our families as well. We hear of couples not talking together for days or weeks, but they live under the same ceiling. Look at Abraham when a contention happened between Lot's shepherds and Abraham's shepherds. He said to him, please, let no strife be between me and you. We are brothers. Abraham was a man who wanted to live in peace. He didn't mind to sacrifice, to give away the, the lovely land and take the poor land. But he didn't want any strife. Where contention come from? One is judging, even without information. And that's why the Bible said, judge nothing before the time. You don't know everything. The second reason that we don't taste the spirit. One of the uh, priests, he was uh, serving in the church for many years and then uh, another priest was ordained new priest was ordained. So one of the uh, people listened to the sermon of the new priest and he got a feeling that this is referring to another priest in a bad way. He thought this, so he went to his father of confession and said to him, Abuna, I want to tell you something. I'm, I'm not happy because the other priest talk about you. He referred in the sermon to you. And Abuna said to him, did he mention my name? He said, no, but I understood this. So Abuna, on the spot, he ran to the other priest and said, I'm so sorry, one of my confessors, he might have understood you wrong. Did you really mean something about me? 
and the other priest said, oh, absolutely no, I didn't mean this at all. I was talking about this and this and this. So by doing this, he avoided a big problem. Because most of the time we don't test the spirit. How did you know that your sister said this about you? When you didn't see, when you didn't hear yourself. Because my friend told me. How do you know if she didn't add something? If she didn't misunderstand it? The St. John said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit, whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out in the world. This unfortunately could be the reason of many contentions. We don't hear, we are not in the situation, but we decided, we took a decision. Why? Because someone told me, why didn't you test the spirit first? The third reason is selfishness. Jacob and Laban, Laban is greedy. He want to take everything from Jacob, he changed his wages 10 times. Isaac and his neighborhood. Every time Isaac take a win, they come and seal it for him with dust. They don't like Isaac. What did Isaac do? Went away and digged another well. He didn't fight with them. This was his principle. He wanted peace. If you are fighting with me for this well, okay, take it. I'll go another and dig another well. The fourth reason is anger and ego. The Bible says, by pride comes nothing but strife. When I say, how it comes that my wife talk to me in this way? How it comes that this deacon or this priest talk to me in this way? I'll show him, I'll show her. By pride comes nothing but strife. But with the will advised is wisdom. So what are the consequences of contentions. The consequences, number one, is to grieve the spirit and lose your peace. No matter how much activities you do, how much the appearance of righteousness you do, you are losing your peace because you are not even able to talk for someone. You are not able to say hello. You are not able to kiss him. So you lose your peace. Bitter is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. Look, my Abyssal, Wamaha Salama, Khayyum would be my end Zabah, Wamaha, huh? Khassam. Nothing is more miserable than a house that someone strive and doesn't talk to the other one all the time. Very hard to reconcile with. All the time he's upset. Doesn't want to talk. So the consequences, those of peace, unfruitful service. You might be a very active servant, a very active priest, I'm talking about myself. But if there is a strife, there's no fruits. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Examine your heart. So how can I treat this? How can I treat this? It was written about the Lord that لم يكن يخاصم ولا يسمع حق الشوارع صوت If anyone wants to sue you and take your tuning, let him have your cloak also. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel but be gentle to all. Do your best, one, not to judge. Two, find the information, test the spirit. Three, think of excuses to the other person. Four, do as much as you can to avoid the strife. If he is fighting with you for something, think of something else. This is what Isaac did and God blessed him. This is what Abraham did and God blessed him. 
the servant of the Lord must not worry and pray for her and him. I assure you that if we keep praying, the more, the more we pray, the better our heart will become. The more we pray, the more grace God will give us to overcome evil. And God will see your honesty and will give you peace to overcome this. The last thing, bless those who curse you. Do something nice with them, something unexpected. A card on a birthday when he never expected from you. A visit when he is sick, when he never expected from you. A present or uh, on any anniversary or any occasion when he never expected from you will quench this spirit. May the Lord give us to imitate what the church taught us. When you go to a monastery, when a monk come late to the prayers, he had to greet all the monks in the church. Why? Because the church makes sure no one in strife with another one. When a priest meet another priest or a monk meet a monk, he say to him, Halilni, awad'alni fi hilm. What does it mean? Abs absolve me. What does it mean? I'm making sure that you're not upset with me. Otherwise, I'm not allowed to have the communion. I'm making sure, absolve me. Absolve me. With the grace of God, let us pray for the rest of the Mass that God gave us not to be in contention with others. And glory be to God forever. Amen.